Okay, so here's how it works. First of all, you need an empty shoe. In addition to that, you need a carrot for the horse. And I made St. Nicholas a nice drawing. one of the most exciting times of the year for Dutch children. This is the season of St. Nicholas, and I'm saying season because he's actually here in the Netherlands for several weeks. According to tradition, he arrives somewhere halfway through November, and the culmination of his feast is on December the 5th, which is the eve of his anniversary, um, which is in the Catholic Church, of course, not the day on which he was born, but the day on which he died on the 6th of December. Now, one of the reasons that St. Nicholas is so popular is, of course, the fact that he gives presents. And this goes back to the origins of St. Nicholas. He was a bishop, first of all, a priest, of course. He was born uh, in the 4th century in uh, current-day Turkey. Back then it was Greece in Mira, or around Mira in that neighborhood. And um, during his life, uh, there were many stories about him being a helper, someone who would go to the poor, um, give them money, give them presents, especially to help kids, kids that were in need. So there's this one story that um, a father had three daughters and one of them, the oldest one, had to marry, but he didn't have enough money for a dowry. And so St. Nicholas visited uh, the house during the night and took a few golden coins and threw them through the window. And some of those coins ended up in the shoes of, uh, of the, the, the children. And that's how this tradition that we have in the Netherlands of um, preparing your shoe, putting your shoe in front of the chimney so that St. Nicholas can put presents in them, uh, that's where it comes from. Also very important during the Feast of St. Nicholas is candy, of course candy. It's a children's party, right? So here we have the various sorts of candy. These are called pepernoten, pepernoten. And these are kruidnoten. And then you have, finally, speculoos. It's all very yummy, very bad for your teeth. St. Nicholas doesn't work alone, he also has helpers and they accompany him during his nightly travels over the rooftops of our Dutch houses where of course he is riding his horse and then uh, they will go down the chimneys to look at the shoes of the children, pick up the carrots and the stuff for the horse, uh, the wish list and then put the presents back in place. According to one of the traditions that's where this, this helper, this Black Peter, got his black face. It's a little bit controversial right now in the Netherlands and some people want to, uh, or actually a lot of people want to tr change the tradition, make it less, um, let's say racist, <laughs> that's how it's perceived. Um, I have to say that as a child I never really uh, saw that dimension of, uh, of Black Peter, but I can understand that, that other people take offense. Of course, St. Nicholas, being a saint, can't wear casual clothes. He's usually wearing um, liturgical clothes, a mitre, he's got a staff, and he's got liturgical vestments, the ones that you would wear during Mass. That's why he has specialty shops, and this is where he can get his mantle, his alb, and not only clothes for him, but also for his helpers. And you can buy these very kind of Swiss guard looking type of uh, vestments for them as well. There is another dimension, I think, to this whole St. Nicholas feast. And that is the fact that we're talking about a saint. He's not just a mythological figure, even though uh, you, might, you might think he is uh, just a fairy tale figure. But the Catholic Church venerates him as a saint. And there are a few aspects of St. Nicholas that I think 
make us think of uh, of Jesus and of God. That's what saints do. They make they remind us of, of Jesus. They remind us of uh, of the Father. One of which is Saint Nicholas is a giver. He gives gifts, just as God is a giver. He doesn't bargain. He doesn't uh, want anything in return. He's just pure love, pure self-giving. Uh, the second aspect is. Uh, saint Nicholas is a helper. He was the patron saint, or he is the patron saint, not just of children, but also of um, people at sea that could uh, be in danger. And Saint Nicholas would save them, just as God is a savior, uh, Jesus is a, is a savior. And then the third uh, aspect is that he is a helper. He's always there to help um, people in need, to help especially the poor. Now with all the commercial aspects of the St. Nicholas Feast, of course, that has become a little bit uh, uh, less prominent, but still I think it's, a, it's an important uh, reason to continue to celebrate this great saint. He was a helper and he was, his heart was close to the poor. <laughs> oh, that is just priceless. <laughs> Check out what's, what's hanging there above the street. <laughs> I guess St. Nicholas must have had a rough night. Okay, so here's how it works. First of all, you need an empty shoe. In addition to that, you need a carrot for the horse. And I made St. Nicholas a nice drawing. And on the other side, I've written my wish list. You put the carrot in the shoe for the horse, the drawing for St. Nicholas, you sing a song, and then in the morning, you wake up very, very early, you go to your shoe, and hopefully St. Nicholas will have visited my house and will have given me what I wished for, or not. In some ways, this whole wish list thing is a bit like prayer. You don't always get what you want, but just like God, St. Nicholas knows what's good for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to like this video, share it with uh, other people that might be interested. Thanks to my patrons over at patreon.com slash fatheroderick. See you soon.